You are not hearing us. Kasim bhai. Yes, yes sir. Yes, yes. We are hearing you, sir. Okay, okay. Are you hearing us? Yes, sir. We are he hearing you, sir. We are seeing and hearing you. Uh, okay, would you please uh, uh, give uh, Dr. Momen or Pro Professor Sorry. Sabina Hashem, would you give a brief uh, uh, summary of the patient that we are going to do live case? First, first, sure. uh, first I like to introduce my team. Uh, I am Professor Mir Jamal and uh, with me Professor Hash uh, Sabina Hashem, who is an inter independent interventionalist. With me, uh, Associate Professor Dr. Momen, he is also an in independent interventionalist. And my two registrars, Dr. Sakib and Mizan, and my cath lab technologist and sisters. May I request Professor Sabina Hashem to introduce the patient. So, uh, this patient, uh, 55 year old and hypertensive diabetic but non-smoker. He came to, uh, our, uh, he had a history of non-STMI uh, two weeks back and now he came uh, in our hospital and with a chest pain and then we did the angiogram was done and it showed that significant, can you show the angiogram? Uh, show the angiogram. So he had significant stenosis in the uh, uh, angiogram. Yes, angiogram. Significant stenosis in uh, LED osteum. Um, show the first. Show the first view. Are uh, you see? Are you hearing us? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's loud and uh, audible. Yes. Uh, uh, you see, uh, there is a proximal uh, distal LM involvement with critical LED osteal lesion and marginal LCX lesion seems to be and there is also a ramus intermediate so it's a typhus, tri, uh, trifurcated lesion and uh, we have taken it as you have known the uh, diagnosis of the patient we have taken the uh, view and uh, uh, now I will show as you know we are doing radial initially it was done by distal radial and now today we have done it by conventional radial proximal radial with seven friends guide and in combo technique. Show the first combo technique. Hello? Yes. What a, show that, show that, show that. Hmm. Yes. Sabina, can you hear me? Then uh, multipurpose, then behind the multipurpose, guide catheter. So there is no reservoir effect and uh, patient has no complaint, no pain. And we have taken seven friends guide. We have taken seven friends guide and the guide is introduced into the uh, into the ostium of the left main and we have crossed the uh, BTC wire, floppy wire into the LED as well as left circumflex and we have done pre-dilatation as because the lesion seems to be very uh, tight and that is why we have done pre-dilatation first uh, with 2.5 into 12 balloon, uh, <coughs> NC balloon at 12 atmosphere and following pre-dilatation we have done the IVAS. I was pulled back from LED to LM as well as LCX to uh, LM. So let us see the IVAS findings. Show them the IVAS findings. <laughs> this is the IVAS findings. Pull back IVAS from digital LED. <coughs> Mir Jamal sir, can you hear me? Yes, oh, we are yes. hearing you. Sir, sir why you, uh, you take the uh, for imaging IVAS? Because I, I, I know in your cath lab also uh, OCT. Is, uh, is, is uh, as there because any the osteal lesions, uh, left main lesion, osteal lesion, it is better to image with IVAS, but yes. we can do also OCT. Afterwards, doing the angioplasty, we shall show the uh, OCT run. Okay, thank you, sir. This is the uh, IVAS findings which shows uh, the critical lesion in left entered ostium of the left entered descending coronary artery and uh, show the left enter. this is left main, uh, distal left main, uh, uh, distal left main there is minor plug and ostial LED, ostial LED, show the ostial LED. Uh, ostial LED you show very tight lesion. MLS 2.4. MLA 2.4, <coughs> 2.4, and then it extends 
up to 31 or 30 millimeter from the ostium of the uh, left anterior descending uh, artery uh, distally. And now we show the pullback of um, LCX from LCX to LM. Show the LCX from LCX to LM. This is LM. <coughs> there is no significant plug into the uh, ostium of the left circumflex. And if there is no significant lesion or plug in the left circumflex ostium, then our uh, decision, uh, what is the decision from the... Um, yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. We have a, a panelist here. Uh, may I request Dr. Shangjok? Uh, would have any comment after seeing this NGO as well as this IVAS? So the case is a largely an acute lesion with proximal LAD, osteal LAD involvement, and some disease in the left main. No major disease at the ostium of the circumflex, but with some circumferential plaque. So this is a left main bifurcation PCI ultimately because you're gonna end up stenting back from the LAD to the left main. The decision of strategy comes down to one, whether or not there's disease at the side branch, and two, whether or not the disease at the side branch meets definition criteria for a complex bifurcation. In this case, clearly it doesn't, because there's a, a well-maintained lumen at the ostium of the circumflex. The next question becomes, what are you going to do about your IVIS findings? So there are areas with calcific plaque, but that calcific plaque, as you'll hear in a few minutes, doesn't require uh, calcium modification because it's only a, a single arc uh, of calcium. That calcium is thick. There is no reverberations behind it. Uh, notably at the osteal LAD, there is a lot of dropout despite no calcium. That indicates either a high lipidic core or a necrotic core of a lesion, which gives you a risk for distal embolization of material. And so that's the, the one thing that's worthwhile recognizing about this case is that your, your stent is going to have to come back from the, the LAD back to the left main with, you know, one-to-one -one EEL to EEL sizing, but you should be ready in case you have some distal embolization of some lipidic or thrombotic material that's located behind that plaque given the amount of dropout on the IVIS. Thank you, Dr. Kalra. Uh, <clears throat> now we want to uh, put a stent from mid-left main to uh, proximal to the diagonal as because the entire left main, I do not want to disturb the entire left main or ostium of the left main as because if this patient will require further procedure, uh, then it will be difficult for doing for subsequent procedure when ostium of the LM is uh, a, a, a stented previously. And if it is necessary, then we should have to do, but uh, my IVAS shows only the minor plug in the distal part of the LM. Even then, I, shall, I want to cover eight millimeter from the bifurcation into the left main for port. And this is my decision. Uh, shall I go forward? We'll do provisional stenting. And um, uh, my uh, uh, idea is to do provisional sir, as you sir, call, stenting. And sir, after sir, provisional sir. stenting, I shall see the... Uh, yes. Sir, can you, sir, here is with us Professor Sufya Rahman, sir. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, uh, me, me, uh, and B.S. Gambhir also. Sir, and ma'am, may comment any uh, about the procedure, the upfront twist and strategy, or sir decided it is uh, provisional stenting. Your uh, comment, sir, D.S. Gambhir, sir. Professor Sabina, uh, this is Dr. Gambhir from Delhi. Uh, uh, just uh, one information I would like to know. What is the size of the left main uh, according to IOS? Length. Uh, the, uh, the diameter is, I think, five. Five. Length. And what is the Length. size of the LED uh, uh, where from you would start the stent and what is the size at the ostium of the LED? The, because these three things are very important for uh, uh, deciding the Six kind of stent. In LED. Distal LED. Distal LED is almost Distal about three. Distal where we want to land uh, the stand, that is 3.91. Okay. That is 3.9. Okay. And the left main is 5. Uh, yeah. Left main is 5. Okay. Uh, so, uh, 4.8 something. Yeah. Okay. So, I think… Uh, Nearly 5. Yeah, 4.8. Since there is no significant disease at the ostium of the circumflex, 
Uh, the yes. only thing is ramus, which is not a very big artery, you can protect it. But I think it becomes a clear-cut case of a provisional stenting, yep. which is to be done in a step-by-step -step manner, uh, protecting the circumflex as well as the ramus. And if any of these vessels get compromised during your stenting procedure, then I think you can always fall back onto a two stent technique. Otherwise, it's a uh, straightforward, simple, uh, single uh, stent technique as described by the EBC main. So I hope that uh, this is what you also think. So just to... Uh, hello, hello to Nami sir, I want to ask you, uh, if you want to stand the LM, so uh, do you want to stand up to the ostia, LM ostia, or you can keep... I, I, if there is no disease, as in this case, there is no disease at the ostium, I generally do not go up to the ostium for two reasons. One is that once uh, uh, you are at the ostium and if you have to uh, engage the guiding time and again, you may cause a longitudinal distortion of the stent. Number two, if you have to go uh, and patient develops a disease in the distal circulation at a later stage, then also it becomes difficult to engage the guiding. So yes. I'm not uh, the one who would leave, uh, uh, who, who would go up to the ostium of the uh, left main. I'd leave a few millimeters. And as you said, eight millimeter of the uh, length of the left main from the bifurcation needs to be stented. Well, that's, I think, fair enough. So yes. Just to, to any, I mean, I, I think we've, comment? with. Any more comment? Just lost that. I think Dr. with Dr. Uh, Dr. Mir Jamal, so with Dr. Gambir's <laughs> comments, I mean, I think we both, settled on a provisional approach. Um, for what it's worth, when you go back to the left main, if you want to go to the distal left main on the IVUS, can you, can you, can you come to the distal, can you come to the distal left main on the IVUS, please? Yes, yes. I, I was distal left main, show them. So the comment was made about sizing, which I think is a really important comment because, exactly. because exactly. stent platforms have a certain confine of appropriateness and we really want to use the right stent for the right job, right? This is not that complicated. It's about a square tool and a you know, square peg into a square hole. So there, if we stop the IVUS there, oh, just before the guide catheter, okay? Just before the guide catheter. So that's your disease-free segment, right? Yeah. Right, just, be just before you enter the guide catheter, this is your disease, there, that's fine. Uh, that's the aorta, but that's fine. Come, come a little distally, a little more, a little more, a little more distally. Stop right there. Okay. So now you have a relatively disease-free segment within that distal left main. That's really where you want to measure your size, because if you come a little more distally now towards the distal left main, yeah, this is not ideal because you've got dropouts. So you've got to kind of go back and forth to figure out where you can find true margins, right? Plaque, plaque lives in the media. Right? And, yeah. and depending on what your dropout situation is like, you're, what you're trying to do is find your nearest reference segment to vessel that's going to give you an idea of EEL, so external elastic lamina to external elastic lamina diameter, free of disease. Where that's possible, that's how you actually size the vessel. So in this case, your left main, even you know, the, the sizing measurement there towards the bottom part of the left main is getting into plaque. It's a reasonable approximation. It's a big left main. We can accept that. But... but one has to be careful if you've got a ton of plaque within the media because you can oversize your, your vessel size estimation, right? That's why we try to stent normal to normal. And with IVUS-based stenting, you tend to put in one millimeter bigger, but longer stents because you're trying to stent normal to normal and actually get a uniform result. For what it's worth, my practice is I actually do stent to the left main ostium where possible because I find then that I can be as aggressive as I can be with post dilatation in the left main. We know that your event rates are largely driven by minimal stent areas. And so if you can aggressively post dilate in the left main, in this case, to 5.2 or 5.3 or 5.4, which you may not want to do if you land your stent to the mid vessel uh, and stent EEL to EEL, you have to leave that last strut unpost dilated, right? Then, you know, you trade off. You trade off your guide, your guide engagement for your next case against making sure that your left main is absolutely as large as possible. Okay, uh, Professor Mirjo, sir, you, you can proceed. Uh, yes, I uh, will uh, stand. Uh, so what, what is the, uh, what size we shall uh, choose? Dr. Kalra? I mean, I think, I, I think the crossover size. strategy from the LED to the left main is an agreed upon strategy. I think I'm looking back at the panel and I don't see any, 
any disagreements. Your landing zone was great. It's a 3.91 millimeter EEL to EEL landing zone, but your left main is five. So you're gonna have to select a stent platform after you pre-dilate that's gonna reflect the ability to expand across those things. And this may require some of the experience that you've so capably demonstrated so many times with a 4.0 stent that's a little bit underdeployed at the distal end, but because of the additional connectors, allows you to post-dilate to a size over five. We have pre-dilated the lesion. Uh, we have pre-dilated the lesion. And Can after pre-dilatation, do you want to see the... Yeah, that looks, that looks good. That looks nicely pre-dilated. So I think it's, it's time to stent it now. Can I show, please? Uh, then uh, can I take uh, mm, uh, 3, 5 into 38? So I, 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 again, this is, it depends on the stent platform, but I would not take a 3, 5 here personally. Because okay. a 3, 5 has, I mean, you can take a 3, 5. It depends on what type of stent platform you're using. My choice uh, in this sort of a scenario Sinergy. would be... Sinergy. As this uh, uh, life case is uh, funded by the un unrestricted fund from Boston Scientific, so we shall use the Boston's product. Yeah, so, so my approach generally in these things is actually to take a 4. I would have taken a 4.0. I would have underdeployed it a little bit at the distal end. Yes. and then post-dilated distally with a 375 uh, balloon and then back across the carina and into okay. the left main. We have, with a, we have 438, we are taking 438. Uh, Give me the uh, do, do, does anybody disagree with that, Dr. Sabina? Dr. Sabina, anybody uh, disagree, can, disagree with that? Can, uh, can I make a small comment here? I think yes. if you, if you uh, assess the length of the lesion, uh, at least on the angiogram, it uh, goes beyond uh, the uh, big first septal. Yep. And you would have to stand right up to the septal or beyond the septal because you have to uh, uh, have a landing zone of the stent at the normal segment. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, we shall course. land uh, so, the stent distally yeah. just proximal to the big diagonal. Yeah. So what I feel is that instead of putting one single stent, you may put a 3.5 in the distal vessel and then take yes. a 4.0 and remaining part of the uh, LED and going on to the left main should be centered with a 4.0, which can be expanded up to even 5.25 or 5. Point, in synergy can be expanded even up to 5.75. So I would uh, like to use two stents here, depending upon uh, the total LED. length how much you need on the iOS. So I guess the debate then comes down to the cost of overlap versus <laughs> the ability to under deploy and then post dilate to optimize sizing. Again, these are. These are practice differences. I think ultimately the, a similar result can be achieved with both approaches given the use of intervascular imaging and your ability to really optimize what you're doing. We know that it's 391 EEL to EEL. So deploying right, a synergy stent right out to nominal pressure might be ill-advised. Recognizing that the balloons are measured in their expansion capacity in air, not in blood or in tissue recoil. And so even at 11 atmospheres, you're unlikely to truly achieve a 4.0 balloon inflation uh, uh, with, with a 4.0 balloon stent deployment system. So that's why I typically go with one stent. 38. 4.0, yeah, that, that looks really good. Yes. That looks uh, really good. Let's just see the distal end, proximal to the diag. Uh, go back to the previous Can you give view. us a cranial view? Yes, that is the cranial view. This is the cranial view. Shows the AP cranial, and I feel that you are uh, following on to the disease segment, and in fact, there is a significant disease just beyond the distal edge of the stent. So uh, that's no, the sir, Yeah, maybe one the, millimeter uh, distal, you think? Diagonal, we have seen the IVAS. The um, lesion is not significant, approximately 30% blood burden uh, beyond the diagonal. It is, it is, it is can, sorry, the microphone just died again. It is, it is worth mentioning that if you use the um, sort of under deployment, larger size approach, you've got to have a disease free distal landing zone because your, your chances of dissection go up quite a bit unless you're landing uh, into normal vessel because the, the, the elasticity told, of that vessel is different. It is told that we can land over up to 40% of the blood if necessary. Yeah, you, you can certainly do that, but if you're going to do that, then you've got to size it on the IVIS edge to edge on the lumen, right? As opposed to EEL to EEL, which is a different approach. That's, if you're going to land into 40% plaque, then Dr. Gambier's approach, I think, is an advised approach because you have a lower chance of dissecting at the level of the plaque. If you're deploying into normal vessel, which I think you have based on your IVIS, you're going to be fine with an underdeployed 4.0, which is then post-dilated to reflect an optimal size.
What was your deployment pressure? Uh, nominal pressure. 11. Nominal. Okay. Now I pull back the stand, the balloon, and I shall go a bit higher pressure. Then I shall do the pot. Okay. All right. I go up. So where else is it? Mm. Okay. Mm. Deflect. So having, having high pressure post dilated this with the stent deployment system balloon, are you going to take NC balloons to post dilate? Uh, uh, yes, I shall do with high pressure balloon, but uh, uh, most of the time I like to inflate the entire stent, uh, keeping the just uh, beyond, uh, keeping the just distal part of the uh, stent, uh, uh, avoiding the distal part of the stent by the stent balloon that will uh, give rise to the inflation entire stand very nicely. To uh, totally, totally in agreement. Just to the panel, uh, you know, what are your thoughts on inflation times? How long do we need to keep a balloon up to make sure that a stent is fully expanded? And this is sort of historic because we post dilate most things now, but, but let's say you're doing a left main and you're doing the typical get in, get out. You know, how, how long do you really need to put the balloon up in order to get appropriate stent expansion? Uh, uh, Mirjawan sir, the yes. uh, latest 16 EVC, EVC consensus said that the left main ostium should be left 1 to 2 millimeter because due to vigorous post dilatation of the left main, the 1 millimeter over expansion of the stent, it elongates the stent 2.2 millimeter. So, so you are keep in uh, just 2 or 3 millimeter inside. It is, uh, I think it will be very helpful to rewiring or at that time it will not to be uh, extra luminal. For the fellows, it is one of the uh, consensus that have been changed. Before we keep two, two to three millimeter overhang at least uh, beyond the ostium of the left end. But now the last consensus, 16 EVC consensus said the candy wrapping effect will be that. If uh, over expansion because the left hand stand we always did uh, multiple pot. At that time, uh, one millimeter if, uh, over expansion uh, uh, from the original diameter, it will elongate the stand proximally uh, 2.2 millimeter, which may produce the candy wrapping effect, and subsequent wiring will be extra uh, stand or uh, abluminal wiring will be happened. Yeah, any any, any yeah, comment uh, from Shanjo Kalra's question actually, how much time we should inflate in balloon in left brain cases? I would, I would. Any, any comment from the panel? How, how much time? Time. Yeah, how much time do you actually need to deploy the stand deploy, to get optimal Whether the deployment. stand is adequately deployed or not? Uh, inflation into the left main, so for uh, my uh, decision, I usually do not more than 8 to 10 seconds. Yeah, so the, I, think, uh, in the left main. I think when you're imaging guiding PCI and you're using right. aggressive high pressure post dilatation, it gives you a little bit more freedom. But if you look at the data, you actually need to put these balloons up for 60 seconds. There is, mm -hmm. This has been studied at 15 times 4 seconds, 30 times 2 seconds, or 1 60 second inflation. The, it, it appeared as though the best deployment is 30 seconds times 2 inflations. But I'm not sure if that really is relevant in today's world because you're using intervascular imaging to optimize the result of your deployment and you're going to use high pressure post dilatation to size the stent just to where you want it anyway. This is a holdover from the old days where post dilatation was less common and where your stents were a little bit thicker strutted so they didn't actually end up coming up as easily or as quickly. From the Japan registry data, sometimes they recommend 20 second inflation, at least three inflations should be better outcome. So, but uh, in the from the primitive era, actually we go for the straight way in the left brain, very critical disease. We straight to go for inflation and deflation. But what is the aim to our inflation of the stand? Our primary aim to reshape of memory. So that's why we should inflate first 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. Then you can deflate again 16, 14, 12, 10. Then go down. Not sudden inflation and sudden deflation. Yeah, I so think it's that's my recommendation message. from my side. Yeah, well, I think that's I think, an important uh, let message, me, right? Let me quote a study here, uh, which appeared almost about uh, five, six years ago, where they had, uh, uh, you know, compared the 
15 seconds inflation, 30 seconds inflation, and then one minute inflation. Of course, one minute, uh, the problem was many patients in LED could not tolerate one minute. And uh, there was no significant difference uh, between 30 and uh, 60 minutes. But there was a significant difference in the stent expansion uh, as symmetry of the expansion and then a one year maze uh, with 30 seconds of uh, inflation compared to 15 seconds of inflation. So what that study had recommended was that at least 30 seconds of uh, inflation is uh, the time recommended for uh, adequate uh, and even expansion of the stent and to reduce the maze. But I think one cannot go just by one single study, that's one. Number two, uh, nobody has done any, any, any such studies on left main. Because left main, you can't keep the stent inflated for 30 seconds, 40 yes. seconds, 50 seconds. Yes. So you have to just inflate and deflate and that's good enough. But then you have to go with an NC balloon, that's very important. Uh, stent balloon may not be the ideal uh, balloon to go ahead, go with the NC balloon and go to uh, get the the okay. best lumen that you can get, uh, which is most appropriate to the size of the, uh, you know, size of the vessel that you are doing it. So, so uh, I would Gampi, like to see in this AP uh, Gampi, view, please. I, I, now I want to do port with five balloon, five O into eight. Okay, that's eight. fair enough. Uh, shall I keep the wire in the left circumflex or I shall withdraw the wire before uh, doing port? What is your practice? I'd leave that wire. Jail balloon, jail balloon. Whether jail wire, jail wire. Sorry, jail wire. Uh, whether shall I go with high pressure balloon, uh, keeping the jailing wire or withdrawing the wire? So before taking decisions, sir, can you show the test result of your bifurcation? Ah uh, yes, uh, show the result. Last scene. No, there are uh, different of opinions whether the jailed wire should be removed uh, before giving a uh, high yes, pressure yes. inflation. Uh, but Some. I for one do not. I for one do not and I go to high pressure inflations and fortunately for me I never had any stuck wire or, or uh, cause any deformation of the stent. But if uh, you're using, uh, like in our also, Asian countries we use also. Oxford wire sometimes, well there uh, you, you should not. Uh, you should remove it beforehand. I have the same. Sometimes the coating of the wire can come off uh, in a jailed uh, situation when you have uh, done a high pressure inflation. So that should also be kept in mind. Now, let us see the result in AP cranial because I want to see the distal edge of this scent. Yes. Uh, <coughs> uh, Professor Mir Jamal is uh, yes, Professor Sufia Rahman. Yes, uh, one uh, yeah, we have already discussed about the, um, the pressure time, how long we will inflate, and how long. Uh, do I think a couple of things we have to remember is that uh, mainly when you are using a long stand, you have to oh. give the metal time, time to. Uh, uh, I have seen. Uh, I'm sure Dr. Gambir has experienced that long, uh, yeah. long stands. You don't have to do in a go one minute or 50 second or 40 second. Mainly when you're dealing with main stem, there you can divide it. You know, first 15 second you give or 20 second, give a break and then do it again. And you must give the metal. We have used without IVAS uh, days when we have used long stand. We have seen uh, later on on study that some of the stand, some part doesn't expand properly. So you have to yeah. give the metal enough time to expand. And uh, mainly when you're dealing with main stem like this, you can always divide the time, but your job will be done. Uh, I think that is the better strategy to follow. I mean, I've been following and removing the wear from there is always better to keep your lifeline <laughs> because yeah. you don't know when you are using big balloon and you are dilating it, uh, a strut might have a fracture, you never know. Or uh, might have something, so you might have to deal with the circumflex again. So is, uh, if you can take it off okay. when you use a four millimeter uh, stand, you can always take it off when you're using five. So I think it's be, uh, for me, uh, there is that, that you keep it there. We want to do a job uh, as near as to perfection and less take some less uh, problem 
uh, to face. So to be on the safe side, I think that is a good strategy to leave it there. Or if you really want to do, you can, if, even if you pass another wire on the top of that, you have to do it again, and that will be jailed again. So I think, you know, these are the two things from my side. I think I've been practicing, I've seen it in our olden days and now also. So I think, you know, may, our aim is to put a proper, uh, proper job as much as possible one-to-one. Thank you, Madam, for your best compliment. And according to you, I have posted, I have done pot with five balloon with high pressure, keeping the wire as before. And I have withdrawn the wire after uh, uh, doing pot. Then I recrossed into the left circumflex, and my uh, job of uh, uh, pot is done. Uh, now I want to do the post dilatation as a whole, the entire uh, stand, and then I shall see OCT. Uh, Mir Jamal, sir, yes. uh, uh, you recross rec the LCX wire in which sta uh, start? For the fellows, if you told uh, the strategy well, to recross, uh, in how you will uh, how you'll confirm the distal start or non distal yeah. start? How will con What are the uh, uh, strategy to confirm that your uh, recrossing wire is passes through the distal start? As we know that uh, other than decay crash, most of the cases, uh, other, all other cases, we should have to cross distally. And to cross the distal, uh, through the distal strut, it is wise to do with a uh, double lumen catheter or uh, with a micro catheter. But if it is not possible, then we can do easily uh, under fluoroscopic guidance. Under fluoroscopic guidance, we can also do easily uh, to see the distal uh, start. Besides this, after crossing the um, circumflex or second branch, we can see by uh, zoom or we can see by uh, this stand bush. What is the balloon size? Post dilatation balloon size? What is this the post? Sir, what is this second uh, post dilation balloon size? Uh, it is 4, as because my LED is 4, and so I have taken 4 into 12 with high pressure 16 Entire stent I have dilated. Now I shall show uh, my IVAS or OCT uh, what is the situation. Now my question is to you, why you are considering for IVAS in the side branch assessment? Uh, as because you thing. see there is a TME flow 3, there is no side branch pinching. No, 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 no. I have not told that I, I shall do the IVAS for side branch. I shall do IVAS for uh, main, uh, that is LM to LAD to show the um, adequate inflation, whether there is any other uh, uh, expansion or not. Yes, that's, shall, uh, that's great, that's that. great. As, because, as we know that for left main, usually OCT is not a good tool, uh, even then as because this uh, total left main I have not occupied, so we can try at least. Let us see how it looks. OCT. But angiographically, it is good to see that uh, side branches are uh, flowing very well. Uh, uh, it is a very good things we can see by NGO. Uh, you want to see the side branch? Uh, Shonjog, uh, in that particular situation, do you consider OCT or IVAS? Because you know, pre-assessment is done by IVAS, so I think IVAS is, is the best option for the yeah. post IVAS. That I would, I would stick with. I mean, there's no reason to say that you can't do OCT in the left main. Right, that's a myth. Uh, I, but you I, have I, an I, IVAS open, and you get all of the information that you need. So yes, just yes, use the I IVAS. Do agree, I do agree with you, but uh, you know, uh, the edge dissection is uh, a bit. Uh, well seen by the OCT. So as because we have taken four uh, dia stand, distal vessel is 3.9, over dilatation is there. So I like to see the uh, distal edge dissection or not. And that is why I have taken OCT rather than IVAS. But to me, it, uh, IVAS is the best in this case. 
As because you know, we no, use, I think, uh, we uh, procedure uh, IVAS. That's why we are considering actually post procedure IVAS will be the grateful. But okay, uh, reasonably, it is acceptable. Come, 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 come with me. Come with me. I shall show also the IVAS. I think part of this is also, I mean, if you're comfortable assessing a distal edge on IVAS, you don't need the elevator, especially if you've landed in normal vessel. I don't see the utility of opening another imaging catheter for a different modality. When you have an IVAS open, it's a high def IVAS and you can get almost histologic resolution. Uh, I also tend to believe that uh, since we have done a pre uh, PCA assessment with IVAS, I think it will be uh, fair to stick to IVOS only and edge dissection can be very well appreciated yeah. even on IVOS also. Yeah, th that's also a valid point, right? The OCT systematically undersizes, IVOS systematically oversizes. So yeah. if you've used an IVOS at the beginning, you're going to want to compare your results with, a st with the same technology so that you can actually match apples to apples. Shall I go? No, no, no. No. Hello, sir. Hello. Enable the catheter. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Jamal, sir, I am Dr. Yes. Mo I am Dr. Monir. Uh, can I ask ah. a question, sir? Yes. Sir, uh, why do not we uh, post dilate the LED first and then pot uh, of LM? Ah, yes, your question is justified as because I want to recross the uh, LCX wire. For recrossing the LCX wire, it is wise to uh, do the port first. Otherwise, without doing port, recross is a bit difficult. My wire may go behind the stent start, and that is why I have done port first and then recross the side branch, meaning that as my professor, uh, uh, Professor Emeritus, uh, Professor Subhiyar Rahman, Madam told that I shall have to keep the lifeline for the side branch and then I can do the distal uh, and then I can do the distal uh, post dilatation. You see the OCT? I uh, show them the OCT. Is Thank there any other expansion? Uh, show them. Are you seeing the OCT? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, yeah, sir. But, but full screen. Uh, we like to see that in full screen. There is no edge dissection. Uh, sir, assalamu alaikum, sir. I am Dr. Khandakar sir. Sir, I have a question to you, sir. Yes. Sir, we have seen that uh, the, you deployed the standard distal landing zone is just before the diagonal. But yes. uh, we can see here that, that there is a uh, Modena uh, 011 one, uh, lesions uh, just distal to the stand. So, uh, did you consider, uh, should you consider the, the IFR or EFR? For further evaluations of the diagonal, just ah, after okay. putting the stand. If you want to see, we can show. Yes, sir. And second question, sir, why did you uh, recross the wire in the LCX as there is no significant uh, angiographic uh, pinching of the side branch? Uh, very good question. And as as I shall have to post dilate, and regarding during post dilatation, there may be uh, <coughs> carinal shift, and which may cause uh, further deterioration of the opening of the side branch. So I shall have to keep the side branch quiet until and unless my work is over. Thank you, sir. Uh, this is run from. Okay. Uh, show the entire picture. NGO registration. Are you seeing? Uh, Oh. We are seeing in a small, uh, one, one screen is only um, a large view have been coming. Uh, to, total, show them. Can I make it bigger size? Bigger screen size. 3D show, 3D show. Yeah. 3D. Yes, rotate it. Rotate it? Mm. Ah, yes. You see the three dimensional picture? Dr. Asad, 
diagonal, but the diagonal, I do not think that there is any logic to see the FFR in the diagonal. No, I don't, don't you ask you, sir, the uh, FFR of the diagonal. I, I ask you, sir, there is a Modena 0, 1, 1 class, uh, relations in the LED also. So should you I consider the effort for the uh, uh, LED just distal to the uh, uh, deployment of the, the stand, sir? LED. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, up to this. All right. Adequate post dilatation. And there is no edge dissection and there is no under. We do not see any red. Uh, any, any red marker, all mm -hmm. are uh, same. And mm -hmm. only or two, three start so, maybe within 300 micron. Yeah, at this point. Uh, there is a branch. You see, there is a branch, and that is why it looks like under. And there is a branch. Mm -hmm. adequately inflated, well inflated and uh, there is no uh, mm -hmm. residual stenosis or there is no uh, under. Sir, well, very well uh, apposition is there, yeah. uh, we are seeing. But is there any uh, under expansion in the uh, uh, LED territory like no. this? No, there is no under expansion. Uh, if there would be under expansion, you would see there would be the red, yellow and then uh, blue and there is no red, red one, two start, that is in the LM, not in the LED. Okay, is that correct? Yes, sir. It's, it's okay, and, sir. And where it shows, uh, you are seeing on the screen, this is the branch. At the level of the branch, it will show red and uh, it will show that it is under, but it is not under, it is due to the branch. Uh, two start in the uh, uh, opening yes. of the branch. Opening of the branch. Professor Mirjamal, can you give us an idea yeah. of your approach to the plaque prolapse that is present near the distal left main? So I'm, I'm not sure if that was just a swirl artifact or if there was actually plaque prolapse. Maybe you can scan through the OCT for us there. So the distal left main, show me yeah. the dist keep coming, distal keep left coming, main. Keep coming. There. No, no, come back, come back, come back, come back, come back, come back. Oh, we lost the OCT now. Can you put the OCT back, please? Ah, uh, sure, sure. Okay, come proximally, please. I think it was proximal anyway. We just scan back and forth there slowly. Okay, keep coming. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. No, no. So let's pick one direction and we'll go all the way in that direction till we find what we're looking for. So go distally and don't go backwards, just go distally. Keep going, 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 keep going. Fine, this is okay. So let's come yes. back proximally now. Keep going. Go no, 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 proximally. Come proximally, keep going, keep going, keep going. Go, 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 go. More, 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 more. Keep coming there. Okay, no, you've gone past it. You've gone past it. So go distally again. Proximally, it is. No. So look at about the two to three o'clock position. Go uh, distally from here. Yes, probably it is the ghost shadow due to blood, RBC. So that, that's the question that we're trying to figure out, right? No, the, we're trying to figure out if that's plaque prolapse, and then if so, determine how much of the lumen it takes up and how long it is, because that determines whether or not you need to post dilate it again or put it in another stand or if we can just leave it, or if that's swirl artifact. Yes. But, but this is not the spot. We need and to go it, distally it, by about two millimeters. Yes, and this is not extended. Yes. And you probably won't see this that on a longitudinal view. Well, if it extends more than five millimeter, <coughs> then we uh, do ag aggressive post dilatation. So just slowly come distally, a little more. Just, keep going. Just one frame. Here it comes, keep going, keep going. There, stop, stop. So that's what I'm talking about. This one. Yeah, so that's plaque prolapse, right? And that's from your original post dilatation. This is what we were talking about initially on the IBIS. We there can was do a, further post There was a necrotic here. core, so it's sort of a setup for this, right? And so this is one of those situations where you, you have to make a decision about what to do next, right? Because 
It's oh, short. It's not all that long, but it's pretty big. Okay, I am doing further aggressive post dilatation. So, so my approach here, for what it's worth, given that it's it's very close to the okay. carina, okay. is that I would I would post dilate this again, but you've pulled your wire out yes. of the circumflex, and this is exactly why you keep both wires in until your procedure is done, because That's now right. you're going to have to do something across that carina, and if you post dilate that and it happens to move, it may move into the mouth of the circ. And that's when you want your wire down there. I'm going with the, uh, once again with five millimeter, five into eight stent, a balloon. No, no, a little. And if you go about a millimeter over, it's even bigger. Joe, what do you think is this, uh, which is protruding into the lumen and to the left? I mean, is it a, is it a prolapse so or is it a... That's what I was saying is, I think that's plaque prolapse, right? But, but when we look at the IVUS that we had initially, this is the area where there was a lot of dropout in the wall, right? So this is a necrotic core, which is a setup for plaque prolapse. That's, that's the plaque that splits. Exactly. So, so that's, that's just what I recommended. But the point of discussion here is that we pulled the circ wire out, right? And this is, I mean, when you do bifurcations, there's just, in my opinion, there's no good reason to pull a wire out of the side branch till you're done. Because it's not causing you any problems. And it's your wire access to your side branch, in this case, the circumflex. It may look just fine on an angiogram. But we've all learned that angiograms are not very good at telling us what's going on. Certainly, the angiogram didn't show this thing. Right, so I'd put the wire back in the circ, I'd take a one-to-one -one sized NC balloon, I'd post-dilate it, and then you can either re-IVUS, re-OCT, or accept that you've done what you can, because your next step is gonna have to be to take another stent, you probably don't wanna do that. Uh, Carla, yeah. uh, what do you have mentioned? It is uh, a tissue pull-ups or a st strut? So, uh, that's not strut. No. That's not, that's, that's that's not, not strut. strut. This, this is through the strut. Yeah. Yeah. Struts, so, if the right. question was, is this an area where struts are underexpanded or struts are not, are not further out? So this comes down to what you saw in your original IVUS. When does this happen with struts? When do struts not actually go all the way out to the wall? If you've got a heavily fibrotic lesion, right, if it's deeply fibrotic and, and not particularly compliant, or if you've got calcium that you haven't expanded, in which case you'll get, if you've got only a quarter arc, you'll get eccentric expansion where your expansion will be maintained, but on the other side of the vessel. In this case, you've got very nice circular expansion. The issue is just something's plopped through the stents. And we knew that this could happen. That's the, that was the comment initially on the Dr. IVUS. I have post dilated with the 5, uh, 5 O into 8 at 16 atmosphere. May I uh, show once again by OCT? What is the situation of that prolapse plaque or <coughs> tissue? I mean, yeah. So if you've post dilated with a 5 or with a 4 5, whatever crossing over that segment, then, you know, yeah. if, if you're convinced of what you've done, then I think you're sort of obligated to re-image it to make sure that you fix the problem. That's right. I am going for re-imaging. I am going for re-imaging. Uh, we are running short of time. Uh, Professor Mir Jamaluddin, sir, uh, would, would you uh, uh, proceed with post dilation and here on lecture is still uh, here. Um, so, in between, uh, may we request Shangjo Karla to give his lecture, lecture and uh, later we will come back to the cath lab and we will find the uh, end result after post dilation. Ah. Dr. Shangjo Karla.